ER20. Is it worth it? Hi, everybody. My name is Ron from the Canadian Maker Project. Thank you so much for tuning in. If this is your first time finding the channel, remember to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any new episodes. But anyways, let's talk about the ER20 and is it worth the money? The ER20 is kind of a weird machine in itself. When I first saw it, I was kind of interested. You know, the fact that it comes with a, with a sensor and that it had the um, this fan duct with yellow, was it like a yellowy orange? I kind of looked at it and went, that looks like an interesting printer to try out. And it is in that entry level market that, you know, most printers go for. So to give you a little bit of insight on the machine itself, I'm just going to read from their website. It has a 32-bit motherboard, TMC 2209s, auto bed leveling sensor, power failure resume feature, print size 250 by 220 by 200, and has a special metal plated nozzle. This printer does run Marlin. Uh, forget what I think it's 2005 comes in the base unit. It's always upgradable. They're always bringing out new upgrades. Thank you very much for that. Uh, now we really like that. You guys are staying on top of that. That's the one little thing I really do love about these guys is that they're staying up with the new updates for this printer, which is something I can't say for a lot of other companies. But anyways, what's really nice about this printer is its design, its size, and yeah, it, it is an odd size. When we're so used to Enders and other printers being at 235 by 235 and not giving us anything special. This printer goes a little bit farther. Now, you might notice I got two prints on here. I'm going to talk about these in a second. So I'm going to take these off so we can talk about them. But I want to show you a few things on the printer that really surprised me. Number one is the access that this printer at its budget has two lead screws. To keep your X axis, keep your X and your Z stable, which is kind of nice. You don't see that in a lot of low budget printers. What I also liked about it was its design. It's easy to put together. It comes in three parts, base, uh, gantry, and then you have to put on your handle, AKA your spool holder. There's a little joke to that. Uh, if you've watched our live stream, you would have heard about it, but yeah. But yeah, so it comes with all, everything you need to get going right out of the box in your own filament. A gig card is included in the package with the updated information. When I first started this printer, it was easy to set up. It was easy to get into the BL touch settings and change it. But that's where I was a little bit murfed by it. The printer itself still had the power lead soldered. No clamps, no nothing, not bare wire. They were soldered wires. Now, a little bit of um, electronic knowledge here. If you have soldered wires, solder works as a resistor, resisting current from going from one end to the other end. It's a small little resistance, but think about it over time. If you're doing like a, say a 48 hour print, that solder could melt, get into your board and cause what we call an arcing. If an arc happens, your printer catches on fire, boom, that day's over with. Uh, you know what can fix that? A two, well, not even two dollars. I say maybe about five, maybe about a dollar. And all you get is these little ends that you crimp onto the end of your wire and you stick them into screw downs. It's a simple fix. Why printer companies are still soldering wires, I don't understand that. But if you come across this printer and you want to be a little bit more protected, get those crimps and solder and just tighten them down or just take the bare wire and stick it in. It's not that hard. Other than that, that was my only real beef with this printer. Printing quality has been amazing. I printed two items with this. And more, to be precise. I printed a whole bunch of different test items. But all of them turned out okay. It was to get this level and to get the air and get the um, the probe to do it right. One thing I will say is the probe is slow. And your TMC drivers do not help it. 
it is very noisy when it probes. I was actually going, I thought this was supposed to be silent. Only when it's probing, it is not silent. So keep that in mind. That was a little kind of a little shocker to me. But once I got everything nailed down beautifully, I printed out this dragon. This is a paid for print. Uh, this has been going around Twitter. So this was downloaded on Colts, I believe, if I remember correctly. And I will have a link in the description. But this thing turned out gorgeous. I can't believe the color on this. It's hard to see it in video, but the color is just shines off of this. Very rich, very easy to do. And because it all moves with ease, told me that this printer has some really nice settings. Then I went off and did a normal everyday vase. The vase turned out really well. Even on the inside, there's no stringing. It's all smooth, like it's a little rigidly smooth inside, but that's normal with any layer. With a 0.4 nozzle that's on here, I was getting prints out like this that look a lot better than I've seen in a long time. Really impressed. Then we went into tolerance test. Let's talk about this one. So the first tolerance test I did was this one. This was the first one I'd done. I snapped off all the ends trying to unlock it. And then I realized that when I turned it over, everything was smooshed. So when that happened, I checked my settings and I understood that I was cooking this at 220 and it just didn't work. So I went over and tried it with a different brand. This was the orange PLA I got from um, filaments.ca. Center rolls really well. I was able to lock, unlock 1.5, 5, 4, 3, and 2. And I went, wow, I was able to unlock all two, all of them. But what I found out is that it under extruded. Uh, so after fixing that, Went back at it again with some blue PLA. This was cooked at 220 degrees also. I was able to get it to spin. I was able to unlock five, four, and three. Two and one are totally soldered in, are totally glued in there. And yes, it's going to be under, a little bit under extruded, at least to what I can tell. Not happy about that either. But it kind of gives me an idea that this probably has a 0.3 and you'll be okay with up to 0.03 layer height. The thing with this printer is, is that I am happy with what the results I got off of this. Now we get into the part where I go over the bad parts about this printer. And there's a lot to talk about. First of all, is this. Let's talk about the cover itself, the where our nozzle is. The nozzle is actually attached to this plastic piece. So you have to take the whole front off and it screws on the top of here and here. If I was to print with ASA or anything else that needs those hot temperatures and in the enclosure, I do not feel safe leaving this in there because I'm afraid that either A, something's gonna to happen to the nozzle, the nozzle's gonna drop down or the sensor will fall off or cooling thing might have some issues. These are just things that I look at a printer and say, it should have been bolted to the carriage personally, but that's what they wanted to put the nozzle in the hot end. What does that mean if you ever have to upgrade it? I don't know. I'm hoping no one ever has to upgrade it, but if they do, yeah, there's that. Everybody else uses the metal one, why didn't they? It's a point for nozzle, but we don't know what that special metal is. We don't know if that's uh, metal copper. We don't know if it's metal plating. We don't even know if it's a brass nozzle under, and it's just coated to look like a metal nozzle. We don't even know if it's a hardened, if it's a hardened metal. We don't know this stuff. And that kind of makes me go, makes me draw to another conclusion. Without knowing what that nozzle is, I don't feel safe enough using a brace of Material, like I print with now glow in the dark PLA. I've been playing around with other hard, exotic 
filament that can rip a nozzle in two, which I must admit, I've been really happy with my CR10, which has the nozzle X, because I put everything through that thing, and that thing just works like a beaut every time. But with this one, I don't even know what type of nozzle it takes. Probably a V6, hopefully, but it's finding the right one that was going to work with this. Also, what also bothered me is this is not a BL Touch. This is everyone's own BL Touch. Here's the kicker about BL Touch, though. Are they cloning it from a clone? Are they cloning it from the 3D Touch? Or do they clone it from the BL Touch? And does it use the same pin? Because this pin ever was to get damaged or fall out. I don't know how I'm supposed to replace it. And uh, everyone didn't get back to me about that one. So I have no idea how I'm supposed to replace that. Also, they're glass. <laughs> I already had sections get knocked out of the glass. I did a print and then pulled it off the glass and that happened. Nice little feature though. They give you these clips to for the bed, but if the glass is gonna get scratched that easily, I might as well just flip it over and print it on the back end, like I always have, and then put down glue stick. The, the front end is supposed to be a coated, inked, easy to remove pleat. No, it's not. Also, if you ever wanted to get a metal sheet or anything for this, you gotta go hunt around for them now, because I don't know if anybody's making a metal magnet that's the same size as average 235 by 235 might have been a better bed to go with. Honestly, but I'm a little disappointed they went with glass. I'm not a fan of glass, and I have my own beef of glass, anyways. But if they made it to a normal piece of glass, I wouldn't complain. But there's just little bits that really bug me about this printer, including their over here, their loading mechanism over here is so tight and so hard. They also put a Bowden tube at the end, kind of nice, but at the same time, it's annoyance. Also, let's talk about the base itself. Base is made out of pure plastic. Very strong, but over time that can get brittle and crack. And on top of it, the screen itself. This wheel has no, feels very, very, very plain. Has so much play in it. Like I can turn it and I can skip over, like, it, you don't even feel it sometimes when you're going slow, going through your menu, trying to find that one file that you kind of might have back, backlogged that you needed to reprint. This wheel has very, very, very no click to it. It is very, like, when you're turning it, you know how, like, an Ender or all the other screens, you turn it, you can feel that click, 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 click. This is very very, very sloppy feeling. And uh, when you're pressing it in, it's hard to press in. You've got to really press hard on it to feel it click. So those are a couple of things that I found really off-putting about this printer. And it's enough to make me think, is this printer for me? The answer, honestly, is going to be no it is not a printer for me because i've advanced <laughs> i'm gonna put it this way for entry level this printer has a has a place has a place for someone who's new to 3d printing who's going to be very casual with it who's going to be just you know doing the odd print here or there i think it'll be perfect for an entry level i mean honestly it comes with a manual. You don't see a lot of printers coming with this style, type of manual anymore. It's a thick little book. And it gives you everything you need to know about how to contact them, how to get stuff done. So it's a good book. And it also talks about how to use the Ultimaker Cura. And it talks about how to get the profiles, everything else. For a person like me, who's used a printer, understands the printer, and uses it for everything else. I have not had a heart for this printer. Don't get me wrong, it's done beautiful prints in PLA, 
but I haven't been able to print with Pet G with it yet. And it has TPU settings, which I'm a little scared to use TPU on this thing, to be honest, with the type of nozzle it is. But right now, I'm going to have to say it's a great printer, but it's just not in my ballpark of printers. Just because this alone bothers me. That's my review for this printer. If you did like this review, hey, leave me a comment down below. Let me know if you liked it or hated it. Or if you've ran into something that you never thought to ask or you have a question about it, you know, hit me up. I'd like to hear any of your comments. Also, if you like this video, hit that like button. And also, if I earn your trust now, please hit that subscribe button and ring that bell for notifications so you know when I go live, including a rebuild of a printer I'm going to be doing soon. Anyways, everybody, thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.